All right, you guys, so we we'll take a look how to create the spinning Chrome logo here on Blender. All right, so I'm going to start in Illustrator and export my logo as an SVJ. I'm going to select the logo. Let's go to Asset Export. And I'm going to drag it into the Asset Export. And I'm going to change up the format to SVJ. Click on Export. Let's go to Blender. I'm going to delete everything. And I'm going to go to the file. Let's go to Import. And let's go and select Scalable Vector Graphics SVJ. I'm going to go to the SVJ folder and select the logo. Click on Import. And I'm going to zoom in and it is scaled down. I'm going to select it, press the letter S and I'm going to scale it up. So it's going to look something like this. Now let's deselect, select one of the shape. And now let's select everything again. Right click on the logo and select Join. Now first I'm going to go to the material and I'm going to change up the color to something light. So now I can see exactly what I'm doing. And let's go to Data. And I'm going to go here to the resolution. So with this, you can increase or decrease the resolution of the logo. I'm going to go all the way up to 30. And from here, let's go to geometry. And here we got the extrude. I'm going to go and add 0.002. And it looks something like this. And I also want to add some bevel. Let's go to bevel. Here we got the depth. And I'm going to go and increase it to 0 0.0005. I also can see that the XYZ rotation is here in the corner. So I'm going to right click on the shape and let's go to set origin and select origin to geometry. And I'm going to reset the location to zero, zero and zero. I'm going to press shift plus A, select the camera and I'm going to bring this up. I'm also going to go and reset the rotation of this. I'm going to go with zero, zero and Z, zero. Let's go to output. I'm going to go with 1080 by 1080 and I'm going to need to split the viewport in two so let's go down here to the corner and when the arrow is going to change to this cross all you need to do is just drag it to the left and it's going to split the viewport and I'm going to go to the right viewport and activate the camera view and I'm going to go and bring the camera up something like this now I'm going to animate the logo how it's spinning I'm going to select the logo and let's go to the object and here we got the Y rotation and with the Y rotation you can spin it so I'm going to activate the animation property and let's go here to the timeline and I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to set it on a hundred frames and I'm going to bring this to the end and I'm going to go back to the Y. I'm going to type in 360 and add another keyframe and and now you can see we have the logo rotating. I'm also going to go and set up the render. I'm going to go with cycles. I'm going to change it to GPU compute. And I'm going to decrease the max sampling to 100. Scroll down, go to color management, scroll down. And I'm going to go to the view transform, change it to Coronos. And from here, I'm going to go and activate the viewport shading. And let's go to timeline. And I'm also going to split the timeline in two. So this is going to be the timeline. And this one, I'm going to change it to shader editor. Press the letter N, click on the X, click on new. I'm going to go and increase the metallic. And let's go here, press Shift plus A, search for the color ramp, enter, and I'm going to place it here, press Shift plus A, search for noise texture, and place it next to it. Let's go connect the color to a roughness, and let's connect the color to the factor. And right now I'm going to leave it as it is, and I'm going to go and set up the HDRI light. So let's go to the object here and change it to world, press Shift plus A, search for environment texture, let's press enter, place it here. I'm going to connect the color to color and I'm going to click on open and I'm going to go with this HDRI. I also going to leave a link in the description with the website where you can download these. Click on open and now I'm going to go back to object. Now we're going to finalize that metallic effect. Let's go to scale. I'm going to go with 41 detail 6.3. I'm going to increase the roughness and here I'm going to go with 2.7. So as you can see now we got some texture going on. And let's go here to the color ramp and I'm going to increase the black somewhere to the center. So as you can see, now it's going to make it more reflective. You also can increase the white and play around with the handle. So you're going to get like the best results for you. But I think I'm going to try it out with this. You also can rotate the HDRI if you want. We're going to go back to the object world. And here you can add ship plus a mapping. Also search for texture coordinate. Place it next to it. Connect the generate to the vector and connect the vector to vector. And here at the rotation, you can rotate it. But before that, we're going to need to switch it to viewport shading. So this is how the final result is going to look like. So now I can go back to the rotation and rotate the HDRI. 
And as you can see, it looks kind of annoying because we have all the background going on, but we're going to need to remove that too. So I'm going to go here to the world output, bring it here, press shift plus A, add a mix shader. I'm going to place it right in between. I'm going to select the background, press shift plus D to duplicate, and I'm going to place it above. And let's connect the background to the shader. And I'm also going to search for light path, enter, place it under the background, and let's connect the camera ray to the factor. And now here at the background, we can change up the background however you like, but I'm going to decrease it to black because I'm also going to add some glow. So now in order to add some glare, you're going to need to go to the compositing. And here I'm going to activate use nodes. And I'm also going to go and split this. And here I'm going to change it to another 3D viewport. And I'm going to activate the viewport shading. And let's go here to the little arrow, click on it. And let's go and select always. So now I'm going to go back to the compositing. And I'm going to press Shift plus A and search for glare. Enter. And let's place it right in between these two nodes. And as you can see, it automatically is going to add some glare. And you also can change up the glare here. I'm going to select the bloom. And you also can increase or decrease the quality. And it looks something like this. I'm going to decrease the mix. Minus 0 0.9. And look at that. You also can change up the glare by going back to the layout. And let's go to the world. And here you can change up the rotation. And this also is going to change up the glare. But first you're going to need to go here and select the always as well. So this way you're going to see the effect here as well. And pretty much that's it. Thanks for watching.